What's going on everybody? In this video, we'll be learning about ad hoc Ansible commands to practice for the RHCE, of course. Now, we already got a taste of this at the end of the last video, but what I want to show you today are some additional options you can pass to the Ansible command. This has the potential to be useful on the exam because you can use ad hoc commands to validate some of your work. In fact, that used to be an objective that appeared on this page before. See? I've got the Wayback Machine pulled up here, and it's set to April 5th, 2022. And it says right here, uh, validate a working configuration using ad hoc Ansible commands. So they definitely expected us to be able to do this in the past, so I don't see why it wouldn't help even today. There's also another objective, actually, about writing scripts with ad hoc Ansible commands, so we'll do a little bit of that as well. It sounds pretty useful. And of course, just to be clear, the current exam objectives no longer mention ad hoc commands at all. I just believe that it's extremely useful to know about, so I'm covering it anyways. And, uh, well, if my eyes aren't mistaking me, it looks like Red Hat's going to introduce a free exam retake policy, so that's pretty neat. But yeah, uh, let's get into the video. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started now by creating a new project directory for today's activity. You can see here uh, in the past videos, we got a project zero and a project one so far. So let's continue on with a maker project two. Pretty cool. And I'll CD into there. And okay, so now uh, I'll just write a short inventory file for us to use. So just give me one moment, please, while I type that out. Yeah, so this is all pretty arbitrary, but I tried to make it sound a little bit DevOpsy, I guess. And something cool that I learned recently, by the way, is that you can set the Ansible underscore host variable to something like an IP address or a fully qualified domain name. And then what essentially would happen is that the name on the left right here would be treated more like an alias for something like the IP address on the right. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, especially if you don't have DNS. I wish I knew how to show that in the inventory video, but at least I'm showing it now. Okay, anyways, moving on. Uh, what we won't be doing right away is creating an ansible.cfg file. Instead, we'll be using flags in the ansible command to tune how we want to interact with our managed nodes. So, as usual, uh, documentation is just a man page away. And so if you just run man ansible, there you go. Here is pretty much everything you'd want to know about when it comes to doing ad hoc ansible commands. So, uh, yeah, like there's a lot of stuff in here, but we'll make it easy. So let's first try to get to square one without using an ansible.cfg. This is going to be a bit of an iterative process, so just bear with me. Uh, if I run ansible all dash m and try to use the ping module with ping on all of my hosts, uh, it's not going to work exactly right away. And that's because we're going to need to first specify our inventory file with a dash i. So we remember dash i from the inventory video, right? It's just dash i inventory dot i and i. And let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so we're getting a bunch of errors. And you know what? I think that's all right, because uh, we're making some progress here. You'll also notice um, for App Server 3's uh, entry in the inventory, it's pointing to 10.0.0.13, which is the same thing I set in that Ansible underscore host variable. So that's pretty cool. That's it going on in action. But anyways, uh, the errors that are showing up here are probably due to a issue with logging in with SSH. So uh, I'm going to need to pass an option to SSH to disable stuff like host key checking and also probably to enable uh, Ansible to ask for the SSH password because I don't have passwordless public key authentication set up yet. Okay, so that'll just be a uh, dash dash SSH dash extra dash args equals and then in quotes, I'm just going to type in dash O strict 
post key checking equals no. And I can remove that extra space. And uh, now I'll run this. Yeah, so it looks like I also need to do the ask pass feature in Ansible. Okay, so we're getting closer. Now let's try this. And it's asking for my SSH password. So that's looking promising. And there we go. It's all green. Excellent. So yeah, we're indeed getting somewhere. Now ping works. But we're still living on a couple of coincidences. So like SSH by default will try to log into a remote host as the same username as the one on the client host. So that's why it was using the admin account earlier, which I mean is okay in this case, that's the account I set up for this purpose. But if you were using a different username, then I just want to point out that it wouldn't work. So a different username on your controller node specifically. So for example, if I was running this with sudo, uh, then I'm going to be SSHing as the root user. And by default, it's going to try and SSH uh, to the root user on the manage node. So I don't know the root password, I can just type in whatever in here. And it's going to return errors because of the incorrect password. But the point is, it's trying to log into the root user all of a sudden. So this is where uh, we would want to explicitly specify what remote user we want to use with the dash u flag. And then I can just say admin in here. Now if I run this again, we're going to get all greens. So that's good. And I can remove this sudo now. We don't need that. Uh, I wasn't ever saying that you should run Ansible as root. That's unnecessary. Uh, yeah. So we've almost reached parity with what our Ansible.cfg file gave us before. We can also take care of privilege escalation now by adding the dash dash become flag and the dash dash ask become pass. Um, but I think you can also shorten this down to just lowercase b and dash capital K. That works too. Now if I run this, it's going to ask for the become password, which is good. And it'll still do the same thing. So let's actually switch out this ping module for something else like shell. And then pass some options. And I'll do this in single quotes. And I'll just make it do something like echo... And then in double quotes inside of the single quotes, I'm going to say sup people. And then I'll redirect that into the root directory and just call it something like greetings. And this should work just fine uh, with become privileges as well. And there we go. Um, going back to the RHCE objective about like verifying your configurations, Let's say that we wanted to verify that a service was enabled or something on all of our hosts. That would be a good example of when we could use something like the command module and then a dash A. And then in here, we could run something like system CTL is dash enabled and then a service like SSHD. Sure, that's going to be true, but we'll just find out. And if I do this... And of course, SSHD is indeed running. That's how we're accessing the systems. But yeah, this is one way for us to check on them. Okay, so there we go. We got a bunch of information on a bunch of computers all at once. That's always awesome. And I hope going through it in this iterative type of way made it a little bit more clear about how we can do stuff in, well, an ad hoc kind of way. That's really like the best word to describe it. And a lot of these flags also nicely translate over into the Ansible playbook command as well. So that'll definitely help a lot. And of course, um, just to show you again, if I copy the ansible.cfg, uh, where is it? Project 1 ansible.cfg. If I copy that to my current directory and run ansible dash dash version, it's going to be picking up this file. And now uh, I don't actually need all of these options. I can omit a bunch of them. Like I can get rid of this, 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 this. I can even get rid of the dash i inventory thing. And if I do this, uh, let's see what happens. 
it works just fine. So obviously having an ansible.cfg simplifies things a lot. Um, you don't have to keep such a long command at hand, but I just wanted to show you all of the useful flags just so that we're aware of them in case we're in a situation where we shouldn't be using an ansible.cfg. So yeah. Next, I'd like to share how you might want to go about writing a simple script that uses ad hoc ansible commands. So I'll just need a moment to come up with something off camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I've written. Uh, it's pretty simple. What it does is it writes a string to the etc message of the day file. And it's doing that using the ansible copy module. And uh, this string, by the way, happens to be all of the arguments that have been passed to this script. All right. And uh, another cool thing that I did in here is I set forks to two. So this basically tells Ansible to run in two chunks at a time. I didn't go over that before, but I thought, hey, I might, might as well put it in here. Uh, what else? The host pattern thing, uh, this variable is pointing to deploy, which is the hosts group in my inventory for app servers four and five. So that's why I did that one. Sure, it, anything would have been fine. Uh, and I guess another thing is down here. I didn't specify a module, and that might look a little bit weird, but uh, if you don't specify a module and then start giving arguments for one, uh, Ansible is going to default to the command module. So this is basically Ansible, and then my host pattern, and then a uh, module is command, and then the arguments is cat message of the day. And of course, we're doing this to verify the contents of etc MOTD, right? And so, yeah, this is basically how the script works. Um, I guess like this might be a little bit confusing how I'm escaping these double quotes, but I hope that's clear enough how I'm able to pass this variable into here. Um, you know, you have to escape the quotes. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and just like run this script. So I'll just do a bash ad hoc script, and then I'll pass some arguments, something like that. Maybe I'll put a question mark, some arguments, who knows? It's all mysterious. And then I'll just type in my SSH password, the become password, and we're gonna see some changes. So changed is true, and the destination was the message of the day. And then the second ad hoc command is asking for its password, so I'll just do that. And we're getting the output of the uh, etc message of the day cat command. So it's saying some arguments, and that's because of what we wrote just over here. So that's pretty cool, that's how it works out. And I mean, when it comes to writing scripts like these, just for your practice, like your imagination is basically the limit. But as we'll see in the future, playbooks are a lot better suited for doing this kind of thing. Like, I mean, uh, this command module is always going to return a changed status. Uh, even if I run this again without really needing to do any changes. The first part's okay because I use the copy module, so it says changed is false because it knows it doesn't need to do anything. But for the second command, since it's using the command module, uh, it's always going to say changed. So this is where doing things in the idempotent Ansible way uh, really comes into play. This is what you would really want to be doing uh, actually when you're writing playbooks, not really using command module too much and stuff like that. Uh, you might only need to use it when you need to use it, you know? Like that's all I can really say about that. And before I close the video, uh, here's another cool thing. I can use the implicit localhost group in my inventory to execute Ansible commands onto my controller node. So what I could do is just run Ansible localhost and then dash u and then I'll give in my user. So I'll just use the user variable that should be fine. And then dash dash connection equals local and then I can run a module like ping. And so it'll ask for the password. That's a little bit strange. 
Uh, that's probably because it's using the ansible.cfg file. So let me move that. Okay, let's try that again. So yeah, it just pinged my own machine um, just like that. Uh, it's not an ICMP ping, by the way. It's just running a Python script. But I could also do more complicated things like run the setup module. And this is going to print a bunch of facts about my system. So like if I scroll up here a little bit, uh, let's see. There's the Ansible node name and it says controller rel. Whoops. Yeah, it says controller rel right here. Pretty cool. So, I mean, that's how uh, you would use the setup module to gather facts about your system and output them to the screen. And, I mean, that's all I really have to show for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And, as always, thanks for watching.